Hello, fifth and sixth grade. This is your science video for Friday, uh, July, July, January 15th, uh, probably from the pizza today. Um, the Matthew uh, brought, made me think of his birthday in July, six months from now. Okay, so um, happy 11 and a half birthday. All right, so uh, today you have three work text pages. One is page 116. Uh, you already did 115, which was sort of the introduction to this section about ecosystems and uh, we are going to um, there's a part there on 116 that whole page is going to be done as I'm reading and so I want you to be able to um, have that out as I'm doing it and we'll get the answers together okay um, however that is supposed to work and then you have study guide there on page number 117 and 118 and so we'll go through and we'll do the reading which happens to be the same pages that we actually read for history today. So 172 to 175, and we'll go ahead and get that out and start reading it. 172 to 175. So we we'll have that page 116 out, and as we talk about the different ecosystems, we will have the opportunity to fill in the blanks there on that page. So starting in 172, with a little bit of a background idea just to get your imagination um, rolling here. All right. At first, the forest seems to be quiet. The leaves of tall trees rustle softly in the evening breeze. Then the silence is broken by the soft hoot of an owl. As you look for the owl, you become aware of other animals. A small mouse scurries across the forest floor. A red fox watches the mouse. These are just some of the living organisms in the forest. Many organisms are so small that you cannot even see them. Each organism, whether big or small, is part of an ecosystem. An ecosystem consists, now this is your first area here, the ecosystem consists of all the living organisms and their environment in a certain section of the earth. All right, so an example they give um, is, well, you're coming up here and says, some such as tropical rainforests are as large as a biome, others as a rotting tree stump on the forest floor are small. Um, even your skin is an ecosystem for many tiny organisms. Part of a being, for being a good steward in uh, God's world is learning about ecosystems. So the one that you would put in there was the one that they gave. What, what would that ecosystem be? It would be a forest ecosystem, the one that talked about the owl and the mouse and the fox. Part of an ecosystem. One part of an ecosystem is its environment. The environment is the non-living part of an ecosystem. This part includes the soil, water, sunlight, temperature, and air. The environment determines the kinds of organisms that can live in that ecosystem. For example, plants that need a large amount of water could not live in a desert. An animal with thick, long fur would not survive in the hot, humid climate of a tropical rainforest. Nor could a reptile that depends on warmth from the sun for its body heat live in the cold Arctic tundra. The other part of an ecosystem is made up of living things. These living things include plants and animals, as well as organisms such as bacteria that are too small to be seen. Some of the living members in a forest ecosystem may include trees, bushes, foxes, and birds. A desert ecosystem, on the other hand, may include cactuses, scorpions, and lizards. Some ecosystems have many living things. Other ecosystems have only a few. Each living member of an ecosystem is an individual. And uh, all the red foxes in um, all the red foxes in the forest, though, make up the forest red fox population. A population consists of all the organisms in the same species that live in an ecosystem. Populations can be different sizes. One forest might have a population of only a few, few foxes, but that same forest could have a red oak tree population of hundreds and, white, hundreds and a white-footed mouse population of thousands. Together, the populations of the foxes, mice, trees, and other living things form a community. And this is your next section here on this page. A community includes all the different species that live in a particular ecosystem. And they give you, they ask you for some examples, and we just went through them. And so um, the foxes, the mice, the trees, um, and the other living things that are there together are all part of the community. Um, and so go back to population, and population is, going back there, consists of all the organisms of the same species that live in an ecosystem. All right, and they give you the example of the red foxes in the forest as being one population that they were talking about. All right, so several populations can share one habitat. One area of the forest may be a habitat for trees, mice, owls, and foxes. Each population also has its own niche. 
A niche is an organism's special function or job in an ecosystem. A niche includes all the different ways that an organism uses its resources or available supplies. An animal's niche includes what the animal eats, when it eats, how it protects itself, and how it raises its young. Populations can share a habitat and may even eat similar foods, but two populations cannot share exactly the same niche. For example, both hawks and owls eat mice. However, hawks hunt by day and owls hunt at night. So roles in an ecosystem, the next page over. Oh, I think we had, no, we haven't gotten there yet. I think an individual for that there. Oh, yes, we did have an individual. It's at the uh, on the left side of page 173. So if you look at that, it says um, in, in each individual or each living member of an ecosystem is an individual. So each living member of an ecosystem. And then they give the example of one red fox. And so that was the individual. All right, and so uh, roles in an ecosystem. Animals get food to get energy. But where does this energy come from? The source is the, of the energy is the sun. Plants use energy from sunlight to make food from carbon dioxide and water. This process of making food is called photosynthesis. Plants use most of this food energy to grow and reproduce. The rest of the energy is stored in the roots, stems, or leaves of the plant. Because plants make their own food, they are called producers. All life depends on producers. They change the energy from the sun into a form that other organisms can use. Many living things cannot get their energy directly from the sun. These living things that depend on producers or for food are called consumers. Consumers, such as animals and humans, must eat food in order to get energy. In an ecosystem, there are usually more producers than consumers. Some consumers, such as rabbits and grasshoppers, eat only plants. They are herbivores. Um, these animals are called herbivores. Herb, I'm trying to think in English if we would say, I think it's herbivores for us, herbivores. But in uh, Great Britain, they would probably say herbivores. They get their energy from the plants. However, not all herbivores eat the same part of the plant. Some herbivores eat only the leaves. Others eat the seeds or roots. Some consumers eat both plants and, uh, and other animals. These consumers are called omnivores. For example, the red fox usually eats mice, but it also eats berries and grass. Many omnivores change their eating habits when the seasons change. The red knot eats grass shoots and seeds in the cold um, Arctic, in the cold Arctic until, um, looking for my place here, sorry, cold Arctic until warm weather brings insects for it to eat. Consumers that eat other consumers are called carnivores or meat eaters. These animals usually do not eat plants. Instead, these animals get their energy by eating other consumers. Many carnivores, such as cougars, weasels, eat several different species of animals. Some consumers help keep the um, ecosystem clean. These animals, called scavengers, eat things that have already died. Cockroaches and vultures are two common kinds of scavengers. Most scavengers are carnivores. Another group of organisms are called decomposers. Decomposers help break down dead things in wastes. Decomposing adds minerals and nutrients back into the environment. Plants then use the nutrients to grow and produce more food. There are many kinds of decomposers. Most, like bacteria, cannot be seen without a microscope. Other decomposers include molds, mushrooms, and earthworms. Uh, scavengers and decomposers are an important part of the ecosystem. Without them, the ecosystem would be full of wastes and dead things. And so that's your reading and that one page that we did together. And hopefully that will help you, especially with the uh, uh, study guide there. Don't forget, and in, on your sheet today, I believe it says that you have a um, quiz on Monday. It's supposed to study for a quiz and uh, that's for history, though. Um, and I think that, though, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, we'll have a quiz in science. All right. Well, that's it. Have a good weekend. See you then. Bye.